How's it going guys? This is now vlog number three for Death Diaries. And this one I'm gonna be talking about my dad. Um, and I wanted to start this one out by giving a little bit of background about my dad and our relationship because it was very different from the relationship that I have with my mom. Um, if you noticed on the last episode, if you watched the last episode, uh, my mom and I used to bump heads quite a bit when I was growing up. Um, but I mistook her love and wanting to be around me and wanting just good things for me as just smothering. So when I was growing up um, and I would go see my dad because my mom and dad got divorced when I was in grade school. So I had the every other weekend thing where I would go see him. He lived out in the country and it was like a mini vacation because I, you know, my dad was raised by a generation who had even less or had even fewer tools in their emotional intelligence belt than his generation. So when it comes to connecting with people on a deep level um, and understanding who they are by understanding who you are, he didn't have the tools, you know, and I wanted that when, I, I, I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to connect with people. And it has morphed into this podcast and it's just been a beautiful thing. And I just love it. I, I, I enjoy getting to know people. So when I was growing up, um, you know, that the people that I was getting to know were my friends because they were willing to to go down those 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 deep discussion paths. Parents, not so much. Uh, I would get to the point where it was either I'll tell you when you're older or you know that's just the way it is or something like that. That just didn't fly with me. So I just stopped trying to connect. And with with my dad, it like I said, it was like a mini vacation. Uh, because he lived out in the country. As I was getting older, my friends would come and stay with me, so we'd go play, and it was just a good time. But during those good times, we had fewer and fewer times where we were actually talking or having like meaningful discussions. You know, we, um, I feel like we definitely connected a little bit better when I was younger but the older I got, I don't know that he knew how to. I, I don't know how, I don't know that he knew how to talk to me. And he definitely had his guard up. Now, I don't blame him. I don't hate him. You know, he, like I said before, he didn't have the tools to be able to access that shit. And it affected our relationship. Um, because we never really had that connection. Uh, we never really had that, like, whenever I had something life related, something like very, very important for me to talk about, very important for me to try to understand, he's probably one of the last people I would have gone to. I know that might seem sad, um, it's just what happened. It's like I said, I don't fault him for that. Um, cause he tried, he, he did the best that he could and he did what he knew that he should do. That's all we do. That's what we do. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing what I feel like I should do. You know, that's, I think that's what we do as, as humans. Um, so yeah, like one of the, one of the ways that we, uh, where's I going with that? Yeah. One of the, one of the ways we actually would connect would be through sports. You know, that, that would be the thing where 
I could have a little bit more of a deep discussion with him. So I, I, I'm thinking about this right now. I don't know if that's where my, my affinity for sports comes from. It might be actually, hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit more, but I really enjoyed the times I would connect with them uh, on, on that type of stuff. Cause I, like I said, we never really had that type of relationship. So I think it felt good for the both of us to get a little bit more, but not too much, if that makes any sense. Um, so when it comes to his cancer, his diagnosis, I believe it was 2011 when I got the call. I remember I was, I had just gotten out of work. I was in the corporate world at this time and I heading out to my car, saw that my dad had called and called him back when I got in my car. I was on top of the parking garage and he told me right then and there that he had been diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Mm. That was basically my reaction because how else do you react? Like I just got to I you know, haven't like I was saying at the beginning of this, the older that I got, the less I talked with my dad. So when we would talk, you know, it'd be about some random shit, but it wouldn't be too much. So to get this call out of the blue and after a work day, I'm like, I have no idea how to respond to this. I have no idea what to think. You know, the whole car ride home, I'm like, you know, tears in my eyes, not really knowing what to do. And it pretty much continued like that. Not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say, not knowing what to talk about. When I would spend time with them, it, the walls were still up. You know, it, it was us just hanging out. We both knew the inevitable was on its way at some point. but neither of us had had the ability to get through. Um, you know, one of the things about my dad is he, because he was so guarded all the time, like one of the things that guarded people do is they don't try to accept help. They don't want to accept help and they want to do everything on their own. So, yeah, we didn't really talk about life. We didn't really talk about death. Um, he was just one of those people that tried to suck it up. And because of that, like I knew that about him. So I ended up taking on this type of thing where I'm like, well, I really can't show much emotion around this right now because I just, I, I felt like I needed to be the strong person because I didn't know what else to do. So instead of trying to actually go deep within myself and figure out what the hell was going on in my head and what would have made uh, me feel better about the situation, what would have made our relationship feel better, I was just like, well, I gotta, I gotta be the strong person. I gotta take on all these feelings and just hold on to them because there was, uh, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk to my dad about when it came to life, when it came to our relationship, when it came to going back into some of the interactions that we had that weren't the greatest, that I never got an answer on, that I wanted to know the answer to. And 
it just never happened. You know, I thought that I would be upsetting him and I didn't want to upset him because I had tried to talk to him before um, about a few different things, you know, and it never really got anywhere. You know, it would, it, it would get to the point where he would just shut down. And, um, <laughs> just bullheaded, man. Man, he, he was, uh, one of the toughest people that I've probably known. Like, he was, he's one of those people that would hold on to his pain. You know, he didn't, he didn't want to show it. At one point, he had to be taken to the hospital because my, um, man, my, my awesome stepmom, she's, I love her to death. She's amazing. And she, um, she really just was there for my dad, helped him through the whole thing. Um, you know, didn't take anything personal, was just there to, to help. And I think that was huge for my dad. It was a huge calming thing for, I think, a lot of people around. Uh, and she, she ended up, uh, <laughs> man, she went to check on him one day and he was basically like curled up in the fetal position on the ground because he was in so much pain. So he had to be rushed to the hospital and, um, you know, that was, that was my dad. He was one of those people that didn't, uh, didn't ever want to go to the doctor until he ab absolutely had to, um, just didn't want to deal with it. Didn't want to deal with the hassle, would rather deal with the pain. Now when his, um, he actually, so what esophageal cancer, his was at least, it's where your esophagus attaches to the stomach and it's a really nasty cancer uh, because it gets to a point where it, it suffocates you from the inside out. Like it closes off that connection slowly but surely. It's a motherfucker of a cancer. It's it it, it fucking sucked watching him, watching him go through it. Uh you know, there there was one at one point he actually went into remission and You know, he, he had undergone the surgery to have it removed. He had gone through the, the radiation and, and the chemo, you know, had, had, you know, his hair was falling out and the whole nine with that made it to remission. Then it came back, you know, but at that point he had gone through enough chemo and enough uh, radiation. And I think this is something that you will probably hear if you hear people's stories around cancer. It gets to the point where it's like the treatment is just too detrimental. Just give me death. We're not in a good place when it comes to treatment. Uh, a lot more people die from the treatment than they do from the actual cancer. Um, in his case, it eventually got to the point where it was uh, the cancer because he wasn't he wasn't down to do the treatment anymore, you know. So it was just hospice at a certain point just to keep him as comfortable as possible. Um. So the second after it came back and he was he was getting to the point in in his life where it was close, you know, it was it was getting close. He he finally got to 
to a place where he was he was doing pretty bad and he didn't really he didn't want anybody else to see him the way he was because he was in a physical condition that wasn't wasn't good you know the the chemo and the radiation had created this neuropathy in his his hands and and feet where he couldn't really you know feel them that much and you know i don't i don't blame him i i i don't blame him because i knew the type of person that he was and because of the type of person that he was attempting to protect himself attempting to have his guard up all the time you don't want people to see you when you're extremely vulnerable and that was a big story with us like he was yeah he was just never able to be fully vulnerable with me um e even in his last days you know uh man i re i remember <clears throat> one of the things that <clears throat> One of the things that happens when you see people in your life that are going through quite a bit of pain, you know that there is only one answer. It's kind of a fucked up struggle in your head because you want them around, you you. You want to talk to them. You want to be able to see them, but you also don't want them to suffer. You know, I, I appreciate my support system as much as I've, you know, appreciated my mom and my dad's support system when they were, when they were going through everything. I remember, <laughs> I remember talking with, with one of my one of my best friends, I was, I was living in Columbus at the time. I was in my closet. I was laying down on the ground, on my back, on the phone, just, just basically talking, talking to him and being like, Hey, like, am I, am I a shitty person for, for thinking this, thinking that I, I don't want my dad to suffer. Like I, I didn't see any, any point to just continuing to suffer. Because it, was, it wasn't going to get better. He had all, already made his decision, which it was his decision. I respect that. I'd probably do the same thing. It's just tough, you know? It's tough for everybody. You know, because uh, he held on for a while, even, even to the point where the, the hospice nurse was just, yeah, she was just like, I don't know, I don't know what he's still holding on for, you know, so, I think, and this is just me speculating, because there's no way to know, but I actually, no, I believe that he was holding on because he had had a lot of stuff that he wanted to get out, but couldn't. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, there was... There's a lot of unfinished discussions that we had. Which is why I've, <laughs> you know, been working through it ever since. And I'm thankfully to the place that I am now. Like, I... I did hold on to a lot of, a lot of anger for a while. Because, and this is what I've realized, I was wondering why he didn't want to get closer to me when he was healthier. But he wanted to spend more time with his, his friends. And then when it got to the place where it was really bad, he didn't want to spend time with them anymore. That's when he was okay with, with me coming around more. And I think... Uh, look, I know he would have been okay with me coming around a lot more. But it was just at that point in time and some of those years where I was just like, it felt like I was getting to see the shitty side of things instead of being able to get close to him and have a better relationship. Men. Talk to your sons. Not talking doesn't help us. Attempting to be strong. Push your feelings all the way down to where you can't even access them anymore. Doesn't help. Again. I'm not saying that my dad is a horrible person. He's an awesome, he was an awesome person. I know that he did what he thought he should do. I know he was an amazing friend to his friends because of the stuff that they would tell me. You know, he, he was very close to them. And if, um, if anything, you know, I would say that I was probably a little, uh, I was a little jealous of that. Um, and I think it's part of the reason why I had such a close knit group of friends growing up and have looked for those meaningful type of relationships the rest of my life. You know, so this is why like this, this shit comes full circle. You know, what I, I didn't get then I appreciate tenfold now. I guess to start wrapping this, this whole thing up, um, you know, I love my dad. I know, I know he loved me. He can't change the past. You can try to understand it a little bit more and that definitely helps with, with your present state. Um, but focusing on the past, focusing on what didn't happen, that does not help for closure, for moving on in life. but you can use the past as a teacher. You can look at it and figure out different aspects of your, of your life in the present moment because of the things that happened to you then, if, if you search for it, if you look for it. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, cancer fucking sucks. Uh, we're, you know, I would say the majority of us probably at least know somebody or somebody who is close with somebody 
that has had or will have or has uh, currently has cancer because it is such a widespread thing. It does not discriminate. It does not care about your weekend. It does not care about your vacation. It does not care about holidays. Cancer fucking sucks. Um, to make it better though, I would suggest to really try to connect with people. Talk to them about it. Talk about your fears. Talk about what you're worried about. Talk about the happy times. Talk about, you know, ways you can still feel the presence of the person when they're gone. You know, because if you don't talk about these things, you got to figure it out. And if you can't figure it out, it's a rough place to be. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one. Um, spread the love. Share this with somebody that might need it. Uh, share this with a, a bullheaded man that thinks he needs to hold on to his emotions until he goes into the grave. Doesn't help the people that love him. Doesn't help him with the people that he loves. You know, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know about future topics that you want to see like this, um, subscribe to my channel and, uh, I can only hope that this is, this is helping you work through some stuff in your own life. Some, some stuff with the, the people that you've lost, or maybe you, maybe you just got the call. It's going to be a process. Um, it's always a process. But it doesn't mean we have to, to move further away from people. This is a time to get closer. So that's what I'll leave it with today. I'll see you guys next time.